Okay? And when we get the data back, we're going to then bind the values that we get back from that OData read request into our view model properties. So from that response is the data that we get back. We're going to take the ID and stick it in our view model ID property. Same thing with task. We're going to grab from the user object that we've said to include when we bring back our to-do list item. We're going to go grab the display name property and set that up as our person. And then we're going to grab the ID from the category. And, and again, this is the data that's been selected, the data associated with the record that we're selecting. And now we're going to set the selected category person and status um, view model properties to the ones that were previously entered when this data was added. So this is going to allow us to um, select the correct value from the drop down list. Okay? So that's it. That's the whole function for reading a value. Uh, a specific record from our to-do list item collection and initialize our view model properties. Come back to update and delete in a second. Um, so then after we, we've, we'll come back and we'll look at those two functions. Um, but then standard uh, pattern again, we apply our bindings. We then execute our functions to load our statuses of categories and people. That's going to make those service requests and then bind the values we get back to the drop down lists on our edit screen. And then the last thing we're going to do is now go and load our specific data item. Okay, So let's uh, save this and let's go back and see how to, what this looks like. Okay, So let me refresh. Okay, so if we look at item one here, we see the description. This is a sample task. It was assigned to the super user. Status is open. The category is home. And if I click on this, I go to my edit page. Here's our sample task. Home, super user account, and open. Right. If we go back and pick number two, category should be work, and it should be assigned to the administrator account. If we click on two, we now get number two, and we get work, administrator account, and open. Okay, And these drop-downs, as you can see, are all populated and the values are selected. Okay? So now let's take a look at what happens. How do, we, how do we now, if we make a change to this, and let's say for this another sample we change this from work to consulting, and now I hit update, how is that change going to get back into our table? Okay? So if we look at our markup for our update, you'll see we're data binding our click event to the update task method of our view model and for the delete task button we're, we're data binding the click event to the delete task function within our view model. So if we go back to our view model you'll see here are our two functions. Here's our update task function and here's our delete task function. So these are going to execute when the user clicks on those two buttons. So let's look at update. Right? We're going to create, first of all we're going to do a, um, uh, if you remember when we did the add um, in fact, let's take a real quick look at what our ad looked like. You'll see it's, it's very, very similar. Right, we create a variable called post data. We're going to pa uh, initialize all of the properties of our object that we're going to update from the view model properties. We create these link uh, metadata URIs to the selected items for the um, uh, associated tables for category, status, and users. So we can associate those specific records with this to-do list item. We then create a request object, which is the URI that we're going to do our, in this case, a, a method of post. So we're going to do an HTTP post to this service URL plus this collection. And then we're going to take our post data and place that into the data property of our request. And the last thing we do is we use our OData library to do a request. And then we get our data back and we go back to our page. Edit, very similar. Right? We're going to do the same code. In fact, you can copy and paste this. It's the same code. We're going to create our, in this case, we're going to do put data. Um, we're going to pr initialize our properties, create our links to our selected items. In this case, if we change this, the uh, category, it'll be the new category selected. And now we create our request object. Now, in this case, we're going to do an update. So the service URL, the request URI, is going to be our service URL slash to-do list items. And then in parentheses, again, we're going to pass our primary key. This is going to allow our WCF data service to know which item, which specific record within the to-do list items collection that we're going to be posting this data to. But in this case, the method is going to be different. Now, you could do a put. Um, post is for adding new data. A put is for um, updating existing data. And then there's another HTTP verb called merge. The difference between put and merge, put will basically replace all of the data for all of the properties. So if you're going to use put, you have to make sure that in your put data, you have every single uh, property 
that ma matching up to the um, columns in your table because it's going to do a complete replacement of all of the properties on your on your data model. If you do a merge, the uh, WCF service is going to look at each of the properties that you are passing in and only update those specific columns. So in this case, if I um, if I didn't uh, pass in a module ID in my put data and I use merge, the existing value for model ID would still module ID would still be in my table. It wouldn't replace it. If I left out module ID and didn't include it in my put data, but I used a put verb, then module ID would be blanked out because it's going to do a complete replacement. It won't see a value for module ID, so it'll attempt to post a blank module ID to the table. So um, it's probably best to just use merge all the time when you're doing updates. Um, just for efficiency, you're only updating the columns that change, and you're less likely to blank out data by mistake if you forget to pass in a, a specific property. Okay, so we create our put data, we create a request object, we're going to do a merge, we, we place all our data in the data property of our request, we do an OData request um, to our request object, and then we're done and we go back. So delete, very similar, uh, although in delete, the only data you need in your put, uh, in your, uh, put um, property is just the ID, the unique ID of the item that you want to delete. Okay, so we create our, our put data, we set our ID property to our unique ID of the item that we're looking at, and we create a request object, and again we're going to post to that same service URL collection and then in parentheses the unique ID, the primary key of the item that we want to uh, uh, post to, and in this case our method is going to be delete, so we're going to um, at this point we'll pop up a confirmation box, are you sure you want to delete this task? If they say yes, then we do our OData request, we're going to post again to this to-do list item collection, pass in the primary key, we're going to pass in the delete verb, that should delete the record from the table and then we go and we're going to then uh, redirect back to our main screen and view. So let's save this, let's go back and it should all be working now. So let's go home, so let's edit this second task. Okay, it's currently work and open is the category and the status and its description is this another sample. So let's go ahead and edit that. We'll say this is another sample that has been edited. Let's change the category from work to consulting. We'll leave it assigned to the administrator, but let's say we're also putting this on hold. So we've made three changes to three out of the four columns. We'll hit update task. We go back to our screen. We now see that our description has been changed, our category and our status has been changed, our administrator count is the same. Okay. So let's say, uh, let's go ahead and delete item number one. So we'll click on number one, we show our data, we hit the delete, it says do you want to delete, this is a sample task, okay, if I hit cancel it'll stay here, if I hit OK it'll delete that item, we're back to our table and that item has been deleted from our database. So that's uh, um, our video showing how to use uh, the Entity Framework, WCF Data Service, Knockout JS, the Data JS Library for OData making service requests, and um, to create edit and delete screens for your data. Okay. Uh, our next video, we'll uh, we'll do a couple more things to just um, uh, pretty this up a little bit. We'll show you how you can do some advanced knockout data binding to do things now where we'll be able to create filters. Um, on the on the columns. So let's say I only want to see the to-do list items where in the work category or have been assigned to a specific person. Um, and we'll add some of the nice uh, bells and whistles um, so that when you're filtering, if there are no records, we have a mess, a nice pretty message that says there's no data. We'll have some loading animation screens while the data is being retrieved in case you've got a, a slow connection. So we'll just uh, uh, finish up with the UI. Uh, in one more video and then we'll move on from there and we'll go to mobile and security. So hope you're enjoying the series and um, um, hopefully you'll come back for the next video. Thanks. Bye.